Welcome to episode number 123 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media, and today presented to you by our friends over at SeatGeek. I am Chris Rose, joined today by the, I don't want to say it too loud, but soon to be future all-star of the Toronto Blue Jays, Alec Manoa. Big Puma, as he's like to be called <laughs> on his uh, on his screen here. So we were supposed to do this yesterday, but you have to explain to everybody why this got pushed back a day. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, day after my start, <clears throat> I usually go and I float. Uh, it's kind of like a meditation kind of thing, just really good for recovery for the body, for the mind. Um, so when I went to, to float, came back to my building, and there's fire trucks outside and just a bunch, <laughs> a bunch of people outside and all this stuff. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Uh, basically, couldn't get up to, to my apartment or anything for about an hour. So here we are today. All right, so the place did not burn down. No, it was okay. a false alarm. <laughs> false alarm. You know what it is? It's somebody partying after a Blue Jays win on a Monday night, pulling the fire alarm. See what you did after pitching six shutout innings? You're causing all sorts of havoc in your building now. If, if that's the reason, I'll, I'll take it. You take it every start? But, <laughs> yeah, so you, you said you go float? Is that? Yeah. Did I hear like that right? Tank. Yeah, it's a float tank. I've never heard of this. You got to fill me in. Yeah, so it's just like a, it's like a big tank um, filled with like salt water, and then you kind of just get in there and like literally float um, on the salt water. Um, put like a little neck, like a little neck thing, so your neck doesn't get um, all cramped up, and then you kind of just let your body completely relax. And when you get out of there, it literally feels like you slept twenty four hours straight. So are you? encased in this big thing yeah or is it yeah. open no no it's closed oh my Completely god i don't know it's black dark closed trapped in there for an hour <laughs> oh my god so see i'm one of those guys that always thinks the worst so i would have like <laughs> a horror flick feeling that the water would just continue to rise and i couldn't get out of it you you didn't have any of that stuff no no no, no. If the water rises you're just gonna rise with it <laughs> but eventually you're going to run out of space, dude. Hopefully I wake up by that. <laughs> I like that though. I'm digging it. Um, I've wanted to talk to you for well over a, a year since you made your debut. I, I remember reaching out to you and just saying, man, it looks like you have so much fun. You have so much passion out there. Has that always been your, your MO, your deal when you're out on the mound? Yeah. I, uh, I just really love playing baseball. You know, so um, now I'm kind of being able, I, I get to live my dream, you know, and, and play in the big leagues. And uh, it's what I've dreamed of since, since I was three years old, uh, running around, playing t-ball, things like that, you know. So um, now, that, now that we're here, we definitely got to enjoy it. So when, when did you realize, like, this is a real thing? Like, by the way, Alec, I wanted to play Major League Baseball when I was like six, too. And then yeah. when I was seven and I realized I wasn't very good, I'm like, yeah, I got to find something else in this world. <laughs> when did it become a possibility for you? Um, I would say uh, probably my sophomore year of high school, um, my brother got drafted um, and kind of saw like some of the kids that like we grew up playing with like get drafted as well. Um, and that's kind of when I looked at myself and, and I was like, this could this could be a reality like we've always talked about it you know but this is something that you know like seeing other guys do it things like that like this is a reality it's coming up soon like um that could be me in the next couple of years like i want to I, I want it to be me in the next few years you know um so that's kind of when when i, I took control of everything and, and got really really serious with everything and um kind of uh tried to turn that dream into a reality did you think you were going as a hitter though yeah yeah, I did. yeah, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, but whatever it takes to get here, uh, I knew I would do that. So uh, here we are. Okay, but I need to know about Alec Manoa, the hitter. Give me the yeah. scouting report, bro. Uh, part a little surprising. More gap to gap power than than you know over the fence power. Uh, gap to gap, uh, good two strike approach. Um, just put the ball in play and 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 try and drive some runs in. <laughs> okay, I'm not buying it. Uh, you don't seem like a put the ball in play sort of dude. Are, 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 
You're, I promise. I, all of high school, I was like a like a doubles guy, single, gap to gap guy. Um, and I remember I, I got to college, and and college coach was like, "Hey, man, like like out of ten at bats, I'd rather, you know, like a home run and a double instead of like three or four singles. Uh, that's just what we need out of you." And I was like, I was like, "Well, okay." Uh, so started swinging a little harder, swinging for the fences, and couldn't hit water if I fell off a boat. So, <laughs> so, so you went to West Virginia as a two-way player. Yeah, yeah. So you were gonna show hey out. You you were gonna out show hey show hey. <laughs> it was a show hey before show hey. <laughs> yeah. So how how long did that last in college? Um. So my freshman year, I got a few at bats, and my sophomore year, you know, a few more at bats, and then. Um, kind of just after that was kind of just like, I think I can really do this on the mound. I just want to focus on this hundred percent and, um, kind of dropped the bat for my junior year. Haven't, haven't really touched it since. So according to the columns I've read, you, you loved West Virginia, Yeah. but for a Florida kid to get up to West Virginia, it's a little different. Yeah. It ain't South beach. I can no. tell you that I grew up not far from West Virginia. It ain't what would, the first time you set foot on campus, were you looking around going, what did I get myself into? Uh, well, I kind of knew going into it, it was going to be like a really big culture shock. Um, and I thought that that was that was going to be good for me, uh, you know, like getting getting out of Miami, um, like all, all the same people I grew up with, all that stuff, like uh, kind of a faster paced life, like getting to West Virginia was kind of just like more calmer. Uh, the people there were a lot nicer. Um, you know, in West Virginia, they kind of let you get a parking spot where in Miami, they might kill you for a parking spot, you know? So uh, I thought the, the culture shock would, would be pretty good for me and a little bit more laid back. And, and, and the people there are amazing. A lot of blue collar uh, state, you know, um, everybody just works hard and, and loves their Mountaineers. Yeah. Did you go to the football games? Please tell me you did. Yeah, of course. Okay. Course. Did you love it? Yeah, yeah, they were amazing. <laughs> Got did some you great go, memories there. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, did you go to the U football games down in the Miami area ever? Um, I've been a couple of times with with my mom a couple of times, but not not really. Yeah, but you're West Virginia through and through, right? It's n- yeah. none of none of this stuff. I work with a bunch of guys at NFL no. Network who are always doing this. I've had enough no. of that. No, there's none right. of that. All right. Um, only, my, only my mom and my dad. <laughs> so, you know, we, we've seen all the amazing stories about your mom and, and you talk about how she is, she is your rock and she's your BFF and everything else. Um, can you hear her when she is in the stands? Uh, yeah, she's got a dis- distinct voice. Uh, I can definitely hear. Um, but I, I remember my first, my first spring training. Um, I was pitching against the Yankees. It was my first outing, like in big league camp. Big was a big deal for me. You know, like for for any kid, like you're pitching against big leaguers. Um, even if it's spring training, it feels like a big league game. You know, for you, for big leaguers, it probably doesn't, but for you, it does. You know, and um, I remember being out there and I was pitching against Aaron Hicks. Um, and it was a really tough at bat. You know, like seven, eight pitch at bat. And I remember like I like I always look like over the third base line, kind of just like find like a like a consistent point and kind of just use that to kind of lock it in. Like a lot of crazy stuff going around, and then I'll just look there, lock it in, and then you know, like start pitching again. So I remember when I stepped off and I looked over there, I see my mom. Like my eyes just automatically went straight towards my mom. And she's like videotaping and she's like, come on, come on. <laughs> um and I just remember that moment, like, uh, like kind of just really motivated me, um, you know, like, like in a big league game, like even though it's spring training, mom's there rooting me on. I was like, we got to get this guy. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a pretty cool moment. Definitely could hear her voice. And what about in a big league ballpark? I mean, do you know where she's sitting? Yeah, usually, usually I know where she's sitting. And can you hear her there? <laughs> not, not, not as much. Um, but every once in a while, if it's a visitor's ballpark, yeah, for sure. She's and so, probably the, the only one yelling. 
what, what what is she like after games? Is she the supportive mom? Is she the critical mom? Is she going over pitch by pitch? Uh, um, my dad goes more over like pitch by pitch. Like should have done this, should have done that. Um, my mom's more of like you did great. Um, and then if there's like some character things, like you know, like oh you shouldn't have showed emotion there, you know you shouldn't have done that there. Like that's what she criticizes, but never really criticizes like balls strikes or anything like that she knows i'm out there giving my all um she kind of just will will criticize the stuff that you know i could control you know well wait a second here i dig your emotion man yeah. i think that's what makes you you like i want to see the fist pump i want to see after a big strikeout and getting out of a a tough jam i want to see that sort of stuff oh 100 percent, 100 percent. i agree she, she she loves that stuff too she she loves when i pitch with emotion um I would say like just other times, like maybe like, you know, talking with an umpire, like things like that, you know? Oh, so you've had some good discussions with umps. Yeah. Yeah. More than just, can I see your hand? <laughs> it was actually funny the, the other day, an umpire checked my hand and his hand felt pretty sticky. <laughs> oh. And I said, hey, hey what do you got? I said, hey, what do you got on your hands? <laughs> By the way, it looks like such eye wash to me. It looks like bullshit. Like, they're just looking at your hand, like, unless it's the Madison Bumgarner issue. That, yeah. That, like, that's the only time where we've had, like, a full all-out investigation on the, like, it was almost like they were doing a palm reading that day. Yeah. Is it, they're just doing the once over and then you're out, right? Yeah. I, I had one umpire just, I put my hand out. He kind of just looked at it. And was like, okay, you're good. <laughs> like, what, what are you supposed to hide in there anyway? I mean, guy, guys aren't doing that still, are they? I, 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 do not know. I, I was one of the ones that never did it. So, um, good boy. I, I have a, <laughs> a pretty big guy. So I, I don't know how I would kind of sneak, sneak in a little <laughs> move. And, and then if I, you know, if I start trying to do it, like, Oh, did they see that? You know? Um, so I kind of just was like, we're, we're going to find a way to do it without any of that stuff. Listen, you're a happy go lucky guy. I think I can make you, um, get into an even better mood it, it's one of the best videos of you and it was draft night uh when you heard your name called um i had not seen this until recently so here we go with the 11th selection of the 2019 mlb draft the toronto blue jays select alec <laughs> When you heard your name called, uh, what emotion hit you? Man, everything. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, I knew it was going to get called. So, like, if you look in the video, like, five seconds before my name's going to get called, like, I'm like, ah, <laughs> like, hold these emotions in. Um, but, yeah, it's just a, just a lifetime, you know, like, my entire life of, you know, work um you know starting as a game as a kid to to high school where I kind of got lost a little bit and went through some family things and all that stuff and and kind of a journey that didn't know where where it would end didn't know where it would go uh but just knew that I had to keep going and um then to get there you know like like first round pick all that stuff uh it was just a, a huge blessing I thank the Lord every day um for him to give me that opportunity and um, for me to be able to, to, to maximize it. A lot of people probably know your story um, about the sacrifices in particular that your mom made nights where she would feed you and your brother and she wouldn't, she wouldn't have any food. Yeah. What, what was the toughest thing looking back at it about growing up? I know you're a real positive guy, but Hey man, it ain't easy when you're a kid and, you don't know necessarily where your next meal is coming from. What was the toughest challenge for you? Um, I think I think that was the 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 bet, what made it better. Um, you know, as being being a kid, not really knowing, uh, you know, what is what is good and what is bad. You know, like uh, sometimes you don't understand. Sometimes you think it's normal you know, the positions that you're in, you're like, oh, everybody goes to these positions. Everybody deals with this stuff. It's, it's normal. And then you start to get a little older. And you're like, oh, your family didn't, didn't go through some of that stuff. Like, oh, 
you guys didn't oh, oh okay and then you're like man uh <laughs> i didn't have it easy i had a, i was a lot different you know and um uh, i think the 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 best part was seeing all that struggle um and wanting to work super hard to make it to make it better you know and and kind of uh it's a, it's an environment that you can kind of get lost in you know like i like i said in high school you can you you can get lost uh there's not a ton of role models kind of like hey come come do this you know it's more of like ah that stuff's not going to work man like you got to you got to do some other stuff and you know things like that so uh getting getting caught in negative environments is is something that i want to help with now you know like kids that come where i come from like i want to be a voice i want to be an inspiration i want to be somebody that they look to and go well you know what he walked these same halls uh he lived in this same neighborhood um you know he did most of these same things and and he still got to where he's at you know like like i i i can do that you know so um I think I think uh, a lot of the stuff you know growing up kind of has built me uh, for these positions you know now and you know when you look at a bases loaded jam uh, <laughs> or or you look at a real life situation where you know some tough things might be going on like a bases loaded jam there's there's no pressure there compared to to real life situations you know it's pretty amazing stuff thank you for sharing that yeah. I know that our audience is really gonna embrace what you just said and, and appreciate it as well. So who did you, uh, who do you dream about being in the backyard when you were growing up and playing ball? Yeah. So it was kind of a mixture of every, everybody, um, uh, being my brother, we, we always just wanted to do whatever we could to get to the big leagues, whether it was pitch, play shortstop, catcher, outfield, like, like, like anything. So like growing up, we always dreamed of like, like I dreamed of being Barry Bonds and like, like Sammy Sosa and Miguel Cabrera and Justin Verlander and like all these guys in one, you know, and I was a huge Giants fan as well. So like Bumgarner, when he was going through that run where they were winning World Series and all that, and like he was a number four and then turned into the ace. Um, so it's kind of just a, just a mixture of everybody. But um, I definitely say Verlander was one that, that we really enjoyed watching growing up. Um, just the way that he was a dog, we'd always talk about, you know, him starting games 93, 94, and then something something would click and he'd just get angry. And next thing you know, it's the eighth inning and he's pumping 98, mm -hmm. 101, you know, like uh so just just seeing him the the way he was a dog out there and the way he is a dog still um was, was pretty cool for us to see growing up. Have you had a chance to meet him yet? Uh no um but got a chance to to watch him throw in houston and he's he's pretty good yeah i guess he's okay for 39 <laughs> coming back from two years off i guess if you're into that sort of stuff yeah it's insane there's a possibility in a month or so out in los angeles you could be his teammate have you thought <laughs> about that uh no i have not i have not we don't okay. we don't want to jinx nothing i'm i'm with you <clears throat> if you're fortunate enough to get out there do you think you would sit down next to him and take some time to i mean look at the smile on your face i mean even 100%. the thought of of, of yeah. making an all-star team yeah yeah i you, think it uh i think it'd be pretty cool uh i think it'd be pretty cool to talk to him you know talk talk to everybody there just learn from everybody and uh there's going to be guys that you know are going for the first time there's going to be guys going for the probably 10th time you know so um i think yeah if i get the opportunity um you know to be able to speak to some of those guys talk to some of those guys pick their brains a little bit and uh definitely try and keep my mom away from verlander from getting an autograph or something <laughs> <laughs> no 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 listen when you get out there i'm telling you i've covered a ton of all-star games you're signing shit left and right so we, yeah. you put something in front you go buy mom whatever you want her to get a verlander jersey that's signed <laughs> you're gonna be like of course bro I'm telling you, this is how it just rolls. Just okay. bring your bring your signature with you because you're going to be yeah. signing the world and then some. <laughs> so you mentioned um, you used to pretend to be Miguel Cabrera. You faced Cabrera, I imagine, yeah. now through year plus. Yeah. When he 
when he walked into the box, did you have to kind of take a moment for just a second and be like, this is insane? I did. I did. I, I, I was, uh, <laughs> I stood like right next to the rubber and I kind of just looked at him. He looked at me, kind of gave me like a head nod. And I gave him a head nod and kind of like a little smile. Um, but I do remember there was a, there was a reporter um, that had asked me like before the game, like, Hey, you're going to, you're going to face, you know, your, your, your childhood idol or whatever growing up, you're going to face him tomorrow. You know, like, how is that, how's that going to be, you know, whatever, things like that. And, <laughs> um, I kind of told him, I said, well, you know, now that he's got 500, you know, no cookies, you know, come, I got to come at him, you know? So, uh, kind of took that, that first little initial moment, um, kind of just enjoyed and then I was like well the only thing that's going to make this story cooler is if I give up a home run to him or I strike him out so um we went with the strikeout you punched him yeah punched his ticket did he give you the look back because there's a lot of times where these days Miggy will kind of look back and be like "Mm." well after the third one he was a little angry (laughs) you got him three times yeah yeah you can't do that to your childhood idol. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't, I mean, I, I wasn't trying to. I was, but I wasn't. <laughs> did, he, did he seek you out? Because sometimes after he faces young pitchers, he'll kind of give you a little nod maybe the next day or something and be like, okay. Yeah, yeah I, get, I get the nod now. I get the you, nod now. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, yeah, that's pretty cool. Man. Baseball fans, it's time to step up to the plate with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. New customers can bet just $5 on any game and get $150 in free bets no matter what, win or lose. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday this baseball season? With DraftKings Same Game Parlays, you can do just that. Create your own parlay by combining multiple bets like which team will win, total runs, extra innings, and more. And boom, you have a shot and an even bigger payout. Right now, if your same game parlay doesn't hit, you could get a free bet back up to $10. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. And best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code ROSE and new customers can make any $5 MLB bet and get $150 in free bets no matter what. That's promo code ROSE only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. MLB trademarks used with permission. Now back to the show. You guys have an amazingly fun team. Truth be told, you were the pick of Chris Rose to win it all before the year. So no extra pressure here or anything, but I want you to kind of pull through for me if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Who is the guy that's who's got the most swag on your team? Because you've got some guys that flat out can do it. Yeah. Um, most swag. Ah. Are we talking on the field or off the field? Or you know what? I want. I want you can if there's separate categories, give it to me. Who is it on uh, the field? On the field. <sighs> There's a couple options. I mean, I feel like the easy one to say is like Bo. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got a pair of cleats for every day of the year. You know, he's got the headband, the hair flowing. Right. Um, but I think it, I think a sneaky one, sneaky one will probably be you know like a Santi Espinal. Mm. You know, he's got he's he's got some good swagger on the field. Um, plays with like some swagger. Uh, catches, you know, catches balls nice and smooth, kind of flips them, you know. Um, and I got to say Kirky, too. Kirky's got some good cleat game. You Alejandro know, Kirk? Yeah, he's got he's got some good swagger. He's got some nice gear. You know, he's got, like, the all icy baby blue gear for the blue uniforms. He's got, like, a blue and red camo. You know, like, he's he's got some swagger, too. He's a, he's a sleeper pick. You two are, like – polar opposites when it comes to physique i mean look at this shot this is great here you are a mountain of a man what are you six six yeah six seven it, the jays list him at five eight is he five eight <laughs> uh 
I, I have no I have no clue. It could could be five six, could be five ten. By the I, way, they, I don't know. It depends they, on the cleats he's wearing that day. <laughs> so baseball reference lists him at five eight two forty five. Yeah. Are we in the neighborhood? Yeah, for sure. Wow. Yeah. Dude, he's he's on He's one of my favorite players to watch. Like, you know, I'll be watching the eight pack of games every night, right? Because I got to keep my eye on all you guys. Yeah. And he'll come up and he's one of the guys I put on the big screen. He's, he's just he's different, isn't he? Yeah, he is, man. He is. He's, he's fun to watch. He, he plays hard every night, brings a lot of energy. You know, when he's catching, he's locked in. He's, he's talking to pitchers. He's, he's a student of the game. And, you know, and I mean, what do you throw that guy? You know, I mean, he could hit the high ball, the low ball, turns on inside pitches, two strikes, he'll slap a single the other way. Like, couldn't even tell you where to throw. <laughs> Does he get in your ass as a catcher? Does he come out and give it to you a little bit? <laughs> uh, sometimes uh, he'd be like, come on, let's go right now. Uh, but no. For the, for the most part, he's like, hey, keep going right there. Keep going right there. Just real positive guy. Do you, Have you ever had a catcher who's kind of needs to get at you? Or are you that type of pitcher where you respond to people kind of ratcheting up the intensity? Or you you kind of know exactly where you stand every time and you're like, I'm good? No, I kind of understand, like, like where, where, where I'm at. Like, you know, I, I think it's good if a catcher comes and, you know, he's like, you know, come on. Uh, but most of the time I'm, I'm bringing – I'm bringing the fire, you know, so I, I I don't need somebody like, hey, you know, come on, bring it right here. I'm like, am I not bringing it, you know? Um, <laughs> but <clears throat> I think, you know, have that good positive vibe back there. Um, he, he's energetic. He's talking with me. He's he's like, hey, that was a good pitch here. You know, you can do this to this guy next time. Um, you know, so kind of being a little demanding, but at the same time, I'm like demanding within the game plan, you know? not trying to change anything just be super positive and um yeah just just give me more confidence going into that game plan how much fun is it having uh vlad as your first baseman because it ain't easy when you're the son of a hall of famer and then to be i don't know if you saw the other day they had played the same number of games and been like 403 games yeah. and they had the same exact on base percentage they had the same number of home runs he and his dad and all this sort of stuff Give us one little thing on Vlad that we don't know. Man, um, he's pretty good. Okay, I knew yeah, that. He's pretty good. Um, say he's a really good first baseman as well. Um, he's like he's talkative on the field, um, almost kind of like a shortstop, like trying to relay guys, like, hey, Manoa, like I'm on this guy. You know, or hey, I'm gonna play behind them. Um, hey, you gotta come cover first here. Um, hey, like I'm shifted over this way. Like I need you to get over here. Um, he's just like very talkative, very into the game. And, um, yeah, and when, and when he's DHing, he's in the dugout. He's talking with different guys. He's looking at the iPad. You know, he's going over other guys' swings, going over his swings. Um, he's just very intellectual. Um, and people might think, you know, he's just a young kid with super good talent, just goes up there and hits balls. But, um, you know, he's he's always learning. He's always thinking. He's always talking, uh, trying to get better, trying to talk with Teoscar, Lourdes, things like that, Bo. Um, just continue to learn. And, and, and he's a field general, too, you know, so so he's he's really good defensively. I can see him wearing a bunch of gold gloves at first base, too. It's good to hear. I like that. Yeah. Um, are you allowed to touch the home run jacket as a pitcher or is that taboo? No, no. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Okay. Some sometimes we 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 put it on on the like the hitters. Okay. You're, yeah. All right. So you're the guy that drapes it on. You you're not allowed to put it on though, are you? Um, so last year they started doing it like for really good pitching performances. Like they'd put it on like a pitcher coming off the field. Huh. Um and Barrios threw eight innings in the De Detroit uh I think his last time out, um, and Vlad kind of put the jacket on him too. So uh, I think we're allowed to touch. I think we're allowed to wear. By the way, what is on? What are the patches on the back of that thing? Uh, I think it's just every every country. I think it started with every country that 
the team represents like guys from Cuba, you know, guys from the Dominican, guys from Colombia, Mexico, things like that. Um, but then they kind of just put uh, every country on there. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, every country kind of just uh, to rep- represent like a worldwide kind of thing. And uh, they call it Lo Gente del Barrio. So it's like uh, the dudes from the neighborhood, you know, like at the end of the dugout, you know, like the little neighborhood, the little the little clique, like all, all the Hispanics, Americans, like guys from everywhere, you know? Dude, when you put that jacket on that video I just saw, I was worried that that thing's going to split in the back, man. It must be. I was, I was worried too when I first put it on. I was like, oh, it fits. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be too much doing too much. Oh, look at look at the look on that one. That is excellent. I love that. The jacket. Yeah. Who who came up with the idea? Um I think it was uh Vlad's translator, mm. Tito LeBron. Yeah. Um, he kind of pulled it out one day and, and we were kind of going through like a little bit of a rut last year. He kind of pulled it out. He said, This is the new home run jacket. And then it was like perfect timing. Vlad was the first one to hit a home run. It's like, all right, go put the jacket on him. And then I think we hit like two more home runs that day and everyone wore the jacket. So it was like, all right, I guess the jacket is in. See, I would think that somebody would want to wear that thing out one night in the six. Just one of the young kids who want to go clubbing in that thing be like, wait a second, doesn't that belong in the dugout? Like, Isn't yeah. that the home run? <laughs> That'd be great. See, yeah, see good, somebody good out of getting one of these. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Um, I thought last year was amazing for you guys. And I thought the story wasn't told enough. The fact that you all had a home ballpark in Dunedin, Florida, then Buffalo, New York, and then Toronto, Canada. Mm-hmm. How difficult was it? I mean, did you ever even find a place to live permanently? Uh, it was just Airbnbs. <laughs> That's how um, you rolled? Yeah. But I think I think it was... It was kind of tough, um, you know, like you playing in Dunedin and like you got spring trainings of, you know, the Phillies and the Yankees and all that stuff. And you play the Yankees down there and I mean, you go play the Tampa Bay Rays down there and it's like you're literally in Tampa, basically, you know, so it's like home game for Tampa. Um, And then like in Buffalo, like you play the Yankees and it's like, sold out Yankees fans and you're like, man, this isn't a home game, you know? And those those were kind of experiences where it's like, man, we need to get home, you know? And and then getting back to Toronto and like seeing, you know, we only got 15,000 fans and it felt like 50,000 fans, you know, how loud they were and how excited they were to have us back and all that stuff. And it was just, uh, it made the home field advantage just that much more better for us. Yeah. So, I'm just curious about the whole like Airbnb thing. Like, did the team set you up? Did you guys have to find places? Because, it, you, like I said, you it's almost like the entire team got traded twice during the season. Yeah, I think everybody kind of just like found places. There were guys that had like year long leases in Tampa, not knowing if we were going to be in Tampa the whole time. And then we moved to Buffalo. They they still have that lease there. And then they're like, okay, well, we'll be in Buffalo for the next four months, let's get a six month lease here. And then you're only there two months. So it's like, I mean, some guys had a lease in Tampa, Buffalo and Toronto all at the same, at the same time, you know? So it was, it was kind of a little bit of a headache in Buffalo. I just stayed in a hotel, um, oh. just kind of played it by ear hotel for the two months there. And then when we got up to Toronto, I just was able to find an Airbnb um, you know, obviously it wasn't going to do a six month lease. We were only going to be here for two tops, three months. What a bummer, dude. You lived <laughs> in a freaking hotel for two months in Buffalo, New York. Yeah. Embassy suites. Oh, that away. See, so yeah. See, you're such a nice guy. You probably knew the entire staff there. Like, <laughs> good morning, Diane. Hi, Frank. Yeah. How you yeah, doing? Right? You knew the whole place. Like anybody that come in and clean the room. Like, hey, good to see you again. Yeah. Dude, that that would get tired so quickly. Well, it, I mean, my first year in the big leagues, I was just happy to be here. So I'm I'm taking you know everything and 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 I'm like I'm just enjoying every every little bit of it, you know. So but what's now being in Toronto? I definitely am 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 grateful uh, for how we got it now. Can you believe this? So I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. 
and it's only like a four or five hour drive from Toronto. I have never been to Toronto. I'm such an idiot. Man, you got to come up. How, how can you pick us to win the World Series and not, never come up here? I'll do you one better. So I've covered this game for several decades. There's only three stadiums I haven't been to. The new one in Atlanta. Um, maybe that's only two. Oh, the new one in Arlington. And then Toronto. Wow. And Toronto's not new. I, it ain't new, brother. I mean, it it's been new. around, I think, since I was in high school. That is a long-ass <laughs> time. So, yeah, shame on me. Um, what is the best part about playing in Toronto? Um, I have to say the fans, uh, man, it gets loud. It gets loud. It gets uh, exciting. Um, it could be a nine to one ball game and they're still, you know, in the stands drinking their beer and someone hits a double and they're yelling as loud as they can, you know, and, um, just being able to feel that energy, you know, kind of walking walking in before the game from the bullpen, you know, to the dugout and, you know, the fans are, you know, yelling, screaming and excited. And then you get on the mound and you can just feel the energy in the building. Um, it's, it's really fun to play in front of and it's, and it's really fun to represent. I love that. Are you, yeah. uh, have they turned you into a Maple Leafs fan? Uh, probably going to hate to hear this, but being from Miami, it's hard to find a, a, an ice rink. Yeah, I never, never really got into hockey. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's okay. So you're not a Florida Panthers guy. I get it. You were probably, no, were you not, Heat? Yeah, Miami Heat, for sure. Uh, honorary Raptors fan. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, got, got to represent the city there, you know. Totally. No, that's good. Um, yeah, the Heat, they had a good year. Kind of fell yeah. apart at the end. It was like Jimmy Butler, and then nobody else could make a shot. It's all right. It's all right. Some of those young guys are going to step up. Well, we'll see. They need one. They need one more like bona fide score. Like yeah. Jimmy played his ass off, but nobody else was there. And Bam was inconsistent. Just yeah, they'll, just they'll bring it around. I, I trust um, them, Pat Riley. So, are you a Dolphins guy? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Dolphins guy. That's a tough one. Well, what do we think this year? There's a lot of optimism. We're looking good. We're looking good. We got some receivers. We got we got Tua. I'm on Tua. Are you? I know a lot of guys are off Tua. I'm on Tua. He can throw the ball. We just gotta we gotta let him throw the ball, and we're gonna be okay. We can't do none of that third and seven running the ball anymore. Oh no 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 no! I like your I dig your new coach Mike McDaniel. I'm, I'm, I'm out on that. We we you know we got we got the new coach coming in. And, um, we got to have an electrifying offense. No, no, throw, no, no running the ball third and seven. I mean, watching that as a fan last year, just pulling your hairs out. I know it was tough. You know, they got on that nice run after a terrible start. And then they had that terrible game in Tennessee and they never seemed to rebound after that there. I don't know. I got to be honest with you. I'm not a two, a guy. I'm just no, not. It's, no, it's okay. No. Okay, you're gonna come around this year once he starts throwing dimes to Tyreek and Waddle and Jacecki's running up the middle, just bulldozing guys. It's gonna it's gonna be exciting. Are you a fantasy football guy? Yeah. Who runs your league in the in the house there? In in the house. Um, my my stepbrother runs one of them. We have like a family league. Okay. Um, that gets pretty competitive. Um, then I have a, a league with my my agency. Um, which there gets some good chirping there with some of the other guys around the league. Um, oh, so who's like who's in that one? Because it's your, if it's your agency, there's guys from all different teams. Yeah, so it's uh, like it'll be me, Ryan Housley, uh, James McCann, Tucker Barnhart, Tommy Canley. Um, who else do we got? Well, listen, just promise me one thing. No bitch slapping during batting practice. Okay, yeah. let's let's we let's clear. Joke, let's joke around about that a little bit this year. <laughs> that was amazing. Little, right? That was little, amazing, right? Yeah, we get a little competitive, but um, you know, gotta remember it's just fantasy sometimes. You know, just let's figure out uh, IR rules before the season starts, please. Yeah, I don't think we're playing enough enough money to. To, to really get people that riled up anyways. I don't know how much money some guys are playing, but 
Um, definitely not playing enough to where if I lose, I'm going to be that upset for, yeah. for months, you know? Um, yeah. But I can definitely see where it gets really competitive. That's for sure. How good a fantasy player are you? Uh, depends on, on which league you ask. <laughs> Okay. Uh, won, won one of my leagues last year uh, in the agency league. I've been to the playoffs twice, um, semifinals once, um, and then I was in the Blue Jays league last year, uh, which is like I, I really want to win that league. It's it's a good payout. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I I could didn't even get to the playoffs there last year, so. Who, who runs? Uh, we're, we're, who, we're looking to turn it around this year. Who's the guy that? Uh, who's the top of the uh, the list in that one in the clubhouse? Uh, Tim Mesa. Tim Mesa is kind of a fantasy football geek. Mm. You know, just looking at the roster moves and Ross Stripling as well. Ross, he won our league last year, and and man, he had like 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 the worst team probably, and was just picking guys up on the IR and making, making trades and, and was just GM of the year, man. And somehow found a way to, 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 to pull it through. See, so that's the thing. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever made a trade in fantasy football. I've been playing for years and years. Right. And I just always get scared to pull the trigger. Like I'll yeah. go pick up guys off the waiver wire. No problem. I'll put my claims in, try and figure out, you know, cause I'm watching every game on Sunday. I don't, I don't think I've ever pulled off a trade. Yeah, you got to do that. I'm scared. Sometimes you got to let some guys go. It's hard, man. You know, you, you draft them. You, you draft them. You develop them. You want to, <laughs> you know, you want to be buddy buddies. Well, you're just telling me it's just a business, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 fantasy. You know, you, you gotta you gotta make some fantasies happen. There's always one guy who thinks he could legitimately be an NFL GM in the clubhouse. By the way, right? Isn't there? Uh, yeah, that's Tim Mason. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's always one guy out there. Yeah. All right, dude. Um, I think your next start comes against the Yankees, does it not? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it does. That was your first big league start. We all remember that one. This one will be at home. Is it different facing them? Um, I think it's just uh, it's a really good challenge. You know, they're, they're a really good team and uh, got a lot of big bats over there, a lot of guys that can change the game with one swing, you know, so – um, super exciting to just go in there and be able to compete against, you know, some of the best of the best and um, just got to go in there and lock it in every pitch and, and attack and um, and just just try and, and, and keep them in lock a little bit. Do you guys even check out standings? Are you like fans like we do all the time or no? Uh, look at game scores every night, just kind of see what's what's going on in the league and um, what guys are hitting home runs every night and mm. what guys are throwing the ball really well. And, um, just kind of look at scores and, you know, try not to look at the standings, you know, too much. It's still really early and, and kind of get caught up in some of that stuff. Just, just got to go out there and win as many ball games as possible. I got you. Hey, real yeah. quickly, before you go, did you, um, you know, cause Florida is a baseball rich state. Was there anybody that you faced in high school that made it to the show eventually? I'm, I'm trying to think that as a no. I, said, I faced in the show that I faced in high school. I can't think of anybody off the top of my head, to be honest with you. That's all right. St stupid yeah. question. Oh, wait. Where'd you go there, Big Boom? There you are. Nope. I'm here. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. You're good. All right. Before we, uh, before we let you out of here, we're going to spin the wheel of moderately interesting things. It's very simple. I'm not very smart. The questions are rather easy. All right. Let's do it. All right. Oh, the small screen. This is easy. I think you're doing this show on your phone. So what is your screensaver on your phone? My screensaver, uh, <laughs> it's a picture of my girlfriend uh, as a baby. And she's kind of just like. Wait, it, it, of who? Because you, you cut out for me a sec. Who is oh, it? of my girlfriend as a baby. As a baby? Yeah, she's got like this cute little baby smile and like her hands up like that. It's really pretty cute. Wait a second. That might be the most adorable thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> it's a really funny picture. Her mom sent it to me one day, uh, kind of just going through like some old pictures. And I was like, man, I, I love that picture. <laughs> All right. So does that earn you some extra points with the girlfriend? Because you've got 
I mean, that's, come on, man. That's like the yeah. most teddy bear thing ever. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Hopefully we're going to have to ask her. <laughs> that's cute. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Well, listen, dude, it is, it was great getting to know you a little bit here. Um, continued success. You are a ton of fun to watch. You are one of the up and comers. Uh, I know you won't say it, but I will. I'll see you out here in Los Angeles in a month or so. I'm excited for you individually. I'm excited for my World Series prediction. I still believe in the Toronto Blue Jays. All you have to do is punch your ticket. You don't have to win the division if you don't. The Yankees are too far in front. I know you want to, but that's all right. We just want to see you in October because I want to see that place rocking. It'll be fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what we're shooting for. Exactly. So, listen, dude, keep doing your thing. You are a breath of fresh air. You are tremendous energy. Keep smiling. Keep bringing that positivity. It makes a huge difference in the world, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. You got it. Special shout out to our producer extraordinaire, the one and only Robbie Scirocco, our summer intern as well, Sam Singer, for Alec Manoa of the future world champion Toronto Blue Jays. I'm Chris Rose. We'll see you next time on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.